V Shoujo has quite the interesting history for the four years that the company has been here. From its diverse cast to allowing them creative freedom, V Shoujo earned the reputation of being amongst the big three of VTubing alongside Hololive and Niji Sanji. But they've taken an especially interesting turn in the last year or so. What was originally the big name for VTubing on the western side of the world for Twitch streamers to express their talents with anime style models has recently become the retirement home for members from other agencies such as Niji Sanji where essentially they have the second chance to start over and live on with more creative freedom and the power to prove themselves as worthy of being part of the VTubing community. There is also the fact that from the start to begin with, V Shoujo has some members that have caused some controversy, to the point they're also hated with a burning passion, which is why I'm here today to speak on the rise, fall, and rise again of V Shoujo. Hi, I'm your degenerate VTuber Yui Tajibana who wants to be your sunshine. To show you exactly how V Shoujo got its start, we have to go back to 2020. The company was founded that year by former Twitch employee Justin Inacio and YouTuber Philip Fortunat, also known as the Gun Run and Mountain Dew respectively. They shared the vision of creating an organization where the talent have complete freedom. Their goals were to provide members with in-house tech, legal, PR, sponsors, upgrades, opportunity, social media expansion, and a positive environment. Unlike your typical VTuber agency that tends to only house original characters, V Shoujo instead recruits existing VTubers in the independent space. For the most part, they stream on Twitch and use YouTube for their clips or archived VODs. However, some of them may stream on YouTube every once in a while. V Shoujo officially got their start on November 24, 2020, with five members re-debuting under the V Shoujo brand, consisting of Zentrea, Iron Mouse, Project Melody, Silver Veil, and Natasha Nyaners. Three days later, Apricot, also known as Fruit, made her debut, and after a long delay, Hime Hajime also made her debut. Together they make up the original 7 members of V Shoujo, or if you count Veibei who debuted in April 2021, that makes 8. Each of them has unique stories as to how they came up in the first place and earned their spot in the V Shoujo cast, which let's just get this out the way, we all know about Project Melody's introduction. She got their attention for being the first adult virtual streamer on the side Chatterbait, where she was breaking records left and right, and only got people curious as to who the heck was this AI girl going around being so lewd. Human adult streamers were starting to get jealous, thinking she was getting in the way of the grind they were crafting, and Melody was just on a roll. Being someone who is really open about sexual topics, she also streamed on Twitch as a second platform where she would be banned for things she would do and eventually earning her spot as the adult diva of Ishiljo. Iron Mouse at this point needs no introduction. Anyone who has joined the VTuber community or is at least familiar with streamers on Twitch will know who Iron Mouse is. She has transcended beyond being just a VTuber and is overall known as an entertainer and innovator in general. She is a girl who suffers from a disease that keeps her bedridden, but that doesn't hold her back. The amount of dedication she puts into entertaining the fans who watch her and worship her as a role model is just so wholesome and really heartfelt to see. I'm so proud of what she has accomplished in the couple of years she has been here. Natasha Nyaners, also known simply as just Nyaners, is also an interesting figure herself. She is someone who, despite having a cute personality and a laid-back feel to her, is someone who is controversial and has seen quite the pushback from people who know her name. Her career actually goes as far back as 2012, where between that time and before she was given a spot in V Shoujo, Nyaners was part of the 4chan community, where dreams go to die. Where she would take the community and make it her own, and it's also where her name Nyaners originated from due to the username she had at the time. Over the years, Nyaners isn't exactly the person with the cleanest reputation. Left and right, you'll see people bash on her with a burning passion, and while I'll admit that Nyaners has had her ups and downs, I won't call her the worst person either. I honestly choose to stay out of a lot of drama most of the time because the energy we put into hating on someone is energy that could be better spent elsewhere. There is only so much time we have in this world, but looking at her streams and her clips alone, I think Nyaners is quite the entertaining person. As a matter of fact, she was the first ever VTuber I was a fan of before I found more Calliope, so I do have Nyaners to partly thank for exposing me to VTubers. Zentrea is also an interesting figure to talk about. She is someone who has two unique looks to her from being a cyborg and also a red dragon. She got her start when mostly doing VR chat streams, 
Clips would also be posted from them. She was part of the anti-lewd army, contrast to Project Melody, and also initially began as a mute streamer. Her career goes back to about 2016 and made her first Twitch stream on November 30, 2017. She did not consider herself to be a VTuber just yet, but merely a streamer who represented herself with a 3D avatar. She will also post on YouTube and would continue this grind for three years straight, where she disbanded the anti-lewd army, retiring from the VR chat RP community, and not long after, introducing her new dragon form and earning her spot in the V Shoujo cast. Silvervale, as we all know, has gotten quite the reputation recently and Twitter likes to hate her guts, but before the you-know-what controversy, Silvervale was just like the rest of the original 8 members of V Shoujo. She was grinding as a virtual streamer, although a bit later than the others I've mentioned thus far. She started out in 2019, where she became interested in VTubing because of her love for technology. She found the idea of being a virtual character which could move based on her movements to be very exciting. She constantly strives to improve her content and to create new things for her community to enjoy. Now as for Apricot, also known as Fruit, well, you know how her reputation is in the community. There's already so many videos that can explain this better than I can, but just know that there is a rabbit hole of how much drama she has gotten herself in, and so on and so forth. I'm just gonna tiptoe around this so that this video can be a generalization of all the members and not just Fruit, but she isn't the cleanest member of the group. I'm not gonna hate on anyone who still watches her as we all have our preferences, but even I could tell something is up when her own page on the VTuber wiki is pretty empty when it comes to what she did before her past and literally nothing in the years she's been in V Shoujo. She even got her own mother involved in her drama which should tell you a lot, so I'm just gonna move on to Veve. She is someone who got a more wholesome reputation by comparison at least to Fruit or Neanders and is someone who got the boost she needed when in 2020, videos by Japanese YouTuber Shinji promoting her channel helped her gain an audience overseas which gave the attention needed to not only announce an upcoming live 2D model, but earned her a spot in V Shoujo. I couldn't find much on Hime Hajime, but just know that she is just as hardworking as the other members are in the company. Let it be known that I think she is someone who deserves her flowers and has been doing her own thing for the last couple of years. Later on in the company's history, they launched V Shoujo Next, based in Japan, where they recruited two members, Keisan formerly known as Kiro Koko from Hololive, and Nazuna formerly known as Uruha Rushia, who we all know has quite the history herself. In addition, a new member was added by the name of Haruka Karibu, who joined V Shoujo on December 2022 to an audience of over 23,000 people. Now I do want to reiterate, regardless of what you think of V Shoujo, you do have to admit the impact they have on the VTuber community. It's undeniable. At this point in time, V Shoujo had rightfully earned their place as part of the big three companies of the VTuber community. However, a lot of people seem to disagree on that front, feeling they're a pretty sus company and deserved their downfall in 2022 and 2023. First of all, the Nux Taku drama that happened and some people also refused to let go of. They insist that this is what led to the true colors of V Shoujo to be exposed when members were begging for him to not release that video about them, which led to their fan bases absolutely going off on him negatively. It was a civil war. This was not a good time to be a V Shoujo fan, I'll say that. I find this situation to be pretty weird if you ask me. The whole thing was involving doxing and swatting. They made it seem like they can never stream again and made him out to be the villain, which I'm going to say right here. I don't really care about him and I don't care for his content. That being said, I hate seeing people fight like this and the demise of one over the other should not be the way for things to end. And as both sides are still thriving today and some fans still holding on to the burden of this drama, it put a damper on V Shoujo's reputation in the meantime. Secondly, the open auditions that they would hold, which gave smaller VTubers the illusion that they would be opening up spots and allow the V Shoujo crew to help them out with the hard work needed to succeed as a VTuber. But when V Shoujo announced Haruka as the new member of the crew, who was already an established streamer to begin with, some felt that they were biased and were even close friends with her prior to even choosing her, accusing V Shoujo of favoritism. And third, the Hogwarts legacy drama that you've heard a million times by now, but it is part of Ishojo's history and has a huge scar in it too. When Silvervale announced her intention to play the game, the transgender side of Twitter bashed her for it, mostly due to the fact that JK Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, which is what the Hogwarts Legacy game is based on, said some things about trans people that did not fly the right way with the community, prompting them to harass Silvervale to the point she was doxxed, they were going after her family and everything. All for a video game that we would forget even existed in the next few months anyway. Their theory was that by supporting Hogwarts, they were supporting transphobia. By that logic, if you're buying the next iPhone, you're supporting child labor. If you're buying a cheeseburger from McDonald's, you're supporting the slaughtering of animals. You just gotta think, do I wanna eat to stay alive or do I wanna be dictated by some Twitter freak who believe they're the son of Jesus, man? He gotta eat before he think, otherwise we all die. 
Now it's not like the Hogwarts game is as bad as Atomic Donald song where he straight up just bashes the transgender community to an extent that is far more severe than what Hogwarts is doing. To put it simply, what happened with Silvervale was nasty. It is disgusting and the fact that Vishojo wasn't doing anything to protect her is what led people to feel like Vishojo was no longer viable. They no longer could be trusted and just mentioning their name in 2024 just leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. It was a sad time to be in the VTuber community and it still stings hard to this day. Considering this could have been settled like normal people, but no, we gotta be animals and claw this girl just for playing a game that just so happens to be based on books made by some author who doesn't even know you personally, so why bother? And to add insult to injury, Fruit's response to the whole Silvervale Hogwarts drama where she implied that everyone makes mistakes, giving off this aura that she was on the side of people conservative Silvervale endorsing transphobia, which gave people more fuel to bash Vijojo as a whole, affecting the careers of not just them, but everyone involved as they have been through a lot already. And this was the peak of what I would call Vishojo's fall from grace. A company that had given us such memorable characters, you wanted to hang out with them, you wish you could be their friend in real life. The same company that gave us Iron Mouse and Project Melody with their fun content was being tainted by the controversial reputations of people like Fruit and the criticism that Silvervale was going through. And it wasn't even her fault. Following the decline of Vishojo's reputation, the decline of their number of members also started as well. Silvervale and Vey announced their intention to leave the company and continue as independent streamers. Yanners would follow them and do the same thing. And I have to actually give credit to them where it's due is that Vishojo actually allows them to keep the rights to their names and models, something that is not in place in Hololife or Niji Sanji, unless you had a boatload of money to even afford to buy the rights back to your model if that even is possible. This was the end of the original Vishojo. The loss of three iconic members in the cast were suddenly parting ways with them, and I'm not gonna lie, I miss that era. I don't know them personally, so I can't judge them as if I'm friends with them, but just know whatever they've been through, I just love watching their streams whether they are with Vishojo or not. I still am grateful they're still around today. However, an all new era was about to begin, and in the place of Silvervale, Vey and Yanners would come very familiar sounding voices in the company. First of all, remember when Kason and Nasuno first joined and we all connected them to be former Hololife members? Well, say hello to Henya the Genius, the person connected to be Amato Pikami, who just like Silvervale was also receiving backlash for supporting Hogwarts Legacy. Some speculate that was the reason she had announced an early graduation from the original company she was in and re-debuted as Henya. Whatever the case may be, this was our new member, and she was just as cute as she was before. She proclaims to have an IQ of 999 and is a fun gal to watch. Personally, she's my favorite of the new members that Vishojo has brought in, and we're just getting started. I'm sure a lot of you know about what has gone down with Niji Sanji lately, with the whole Zelen Tatsuki controversy, which is just as bad as what happened with Silvervale. Anything bad that happens to VTubers, regardless of what it is, just makes me sad because they're all talented individuals that don't deserve to have these bumps in the road. And for those saying that's just life, should take a hard look in the mirror and think, there's gotta be more than life than fighting to prove yourself worthy, isn't there? Now, while Selene was being screwed over behind the scenes, several members were starting to leave the company and were connected to being new members of Vishojo. Mr. Rias would become K9 Kuro, Nina Kosaka became Matara Khan, and Mika Melatika became Michi Mochavi. This is what I would like to call the rise again of Vishojo, where they went from just another group to being the second chance and retirement home for ex Niji Sanji members. After what had went down before, leading to people believing there was no going back for Vishojo, there were going to be a flash in the pan, a has been, the company went on to strike while the iron's hot to try and salvage what opportunity left they have going for them and try this new method out there and try this new method out where they take former members of an agency that didn't care for them I mean come on 2% of the merch sales is slavery and rebirth them as free creative members who will have a chance to prove themselves as worthy of being part of the VTuber community I find this new direction of Vishojo to be really wholesome because while there is still the scars on their legacy, the fact that Fruit is still there and her reputation is still pretty sus, the new members being there gives off this vibe that there is hope for VTubers to try again and to never give up when the boss you had before was more concerned about money than giving the content and events that the members grind hard to earn and present to their fans. So let's look at the good they do and the awards they gotten to end this on a lighter note. For one, I love that they give attention to smaller agencies and give them some exposure, like with V4 Mirai for example. They got some divas over there who deserve the hype. 
And with Iron Mouse winning awards that are recognition of what she does for the community, shows that her hard work and her grind has paid off in the long run. They also partnered with the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. They even got on BBC News. It can't be denied. Even with how much they have been through, Me Shoujo has done some good. At the end of the day, regardless what they've been through, they're at least not V-tweeters, who will do anything to get attention and be jealous of other success. V Shoujo was actually the opening gate for a lot of people to get into VTubers. If Hollow Life was the beginning for exposure to the West, then V Shoujo helped out with that for sure. At the time of making this video, they have been here for nearly 4 years. The rise, fall, and rise again of V Shoujo is one for the books. What do you think of V Shoujo? Are you still watching them? Who is your favorite member? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching this video. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on X. This is your sunshine, Yui Tachibana, signing out.